would you please welcome Narissa Shah. Hi, how are you? Feeling good? Feeling pumped? Because I am. So, what we're going to be talking about is how to have and build and create a driving, um, fantastic culture. So, what we need is some audience participation. You ready? You excited? All right, let's get it. So, uh, the first question is, when you think of businesses that have amazing company culture, what brands do you think of? I can't hear you. Say it again. Business Depot. Oh, yeah. Okay. Virgin, Atlassian, Flight Center, Harcourts, one more. Google, Google, oh yeah, okay. So what we're doing with Google. Okay, so it's with Google, why Google? When people think of Google, what do you think of? Fun, blah, 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 what else? Pool tables. Staff satisfaction, yeah, okay, cool. Well, what? Be pardon? Choice. Choice, excellent. So what do you think is the average tenure of a Google employee? How long do they stay for? Nine years, two years, five years. Man, you're all wrong. Anyone else? Pardon? They don't leave. Ooh, interesting. Five. You know what? Do you know how long they stay for? 13 months. 13 months. So what I'm telling you is Google has failed. They say that they have the best company culture on earth and I'm telling you, logic suggests that they've failed because to me, company retention and um, a great company culture means what? Means your staff stay. They are with you long term. So I've had 15 years recruitment experience. I started my first business in the GFC. We grew our business to Brisbane, Melbourne and the Philippines. And then what we did is we decided to offshore in the Philippines for two reasons, um, which is really cost and make sure I could audit our salespeople. So out of that, I've had tens of thousands of conversations with people all over the world about two things, their companies and their careers. So what have I learned from that? That's what I'm going to talk to you tonight about. My three tips on how you can create a fantastic work culture that suits you. Ooh. All right, so first one, face and embrace the reality. So there's two companies, company A, company B, both in insurance, both competitors. Company A promote themselves as a business that um, is an employer of choice because they have very high salaries for the market and they give their company lots of sales perks. Company B don't do that at all. In fact, their salaries, their base salaries are much lower. And what they tell their staff is, it's bloody hard work. If you wanna make it here, the reality is you're gonna work nine hours a day and yep, in 12 months you can drive off with a Maserati, but that's real life, that's it. So who has um, the best company culture? Who keeps their staff? Who do you reckon? Company A, company B? B. Why? Which is interesting because company A have a relaxed work environment. They've got all the fun stuff. They can manage themselves. Company B are all about KPIs, accountability. Company B keep their staff. Why? They know what, to, oh man, you're good. Yep, they know, they know what to expect. And the reality is, is because the recruitment team or the hiring manager has told them the truth. They have faced and embraced the reality of their business, their team, their culture, and their job. So when that person walks in that front door, they know exactly what they're getting themselves into. Um, so I work with an ad agency in Brisbane. And interestingly, the company had uh, some little issues um, around finding people. And what we identified, it was two things. The first one, home office. Most of the people that she found wanted to work in a sexy little place in the city. And the second was, and trust me when you see this, you, you will know this is a deal breaker. This really ugly dog. No, it's gorgeous. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's a gorgeous dog. So what we did was I said, when, with all your messaging, you need to do two things. You need to embrace and tell people the truth. 
You want to find people who love um, working in a home office and two, love dogs and aren't scared of dogs. So this... Um, so what this means is it's not just about big business, it's also about small business. And tip one, what you need to know about embracing and, tr and um, knowing your truth is be honest. Don't sugarcoat, don't lie, don't exaggerate, don't tell them how fabulous you are when your team culture sucks or everyone's just left you because you are terrible. You've got to own your truth and embrace it because let me tell you, if you don't, if you don't tell people the truth and they turn up, it's not a question of when they will leave. Or oh, sorry, it's not a question of if they will leave. It's a question of when. Number two, what do you stand for? Perfect two examples, Cardia. Cardia is CEO of a company called Birchbox. Birchbox is an online um, beauty subscription service. Now, Cardia is very, very clear about what's important to her. She's a yes person. She, like when it's flooding, I mean she sees rainbows. So when you want to work for her business, if you are someone who doesn't see sunshine and solutions, forget about it. It's a deal breaker. She's not going to hire you and this is not the right place for you. Now because Cardia knows who she is and she knows what her business stands for, her business has grown to 250 employees in four countries and she's just won funding for $750 million. All right, so we talked about a small business or a medium business. Let's talk about the big boys, Atlassian, which you mentioned before, right? Okay, so Atlassian founders started and now they are NASDAQ listed. They have, their revenue is US $620 million as of July. They've got 1,800 employees, I don't know if I said that. Um, and they have stayed true to who they are. The most important thing in their business is their company values and what you stand for. They have proven this by firing high performers who don't meet their company values. So let me tell you, when you're looking to recruit and when you're looking to find people for your business, when you know who you are, you know what you stand for, it's easy to hire. And unfortunately, it's easy to fire. All right, so how do you hire in values? Everyone talks about culture, culture, culture. That's fucked up. It's, not, it's nothing about culture. It's about values. You've got to know your values. You hire on values. You don't hire on technical skills. And sorry for the swearing. I'm a massive swearer. Um, and I was really trying to rein it in, but I just cut. Um, so know who you are. You can edit me out. Know who you are and know what you're looking for. So once you've understood who you are, then you can find the right person for that position. And you recruit on two things, values and of course technical, right? They both matter. And then you build your plan around those two things. All right, so if this is one thing that I can leave with you tonight, this is the, the number one truth you are gonna hear from all of us, I guarantee you. If you wanna understand how people hire, or uncover the truth when you're in your hiring process about what someone's values is and what um, their technical ability is, you shut the duck up, all right? You shut it, you shut that. All right, and how you do that and why? Um, and I know this works because I, you can tell it's probably really hard for me, but, but I have been able to do this. Um, we discovered that um, policy when we were recruiting for a very critical role in our business, which is our operations manager in the Philippines. And um, part of that process and what we communicated to all the people, all the applicants, was the first meeting, we are not going to talk about me. You're, I'm sure you already know how fabulous I am, right? You, you don't need to know anything else. Um, we're not going to talk about my business, we're not going to talk about our company values, what the job is, what you need to do, salary. We're going to talk about one thing, and that one thing is you. All we want to know about is you. Do you know how powerful that is when someone has an opportunity to talk about who they are for an hour uninterrupted? And what we wanted to discover was what gets you up in the morning? What makes you excited? What does success like to you? What's your purpose? What are your friends like? What's your family like? What do you want to achieve in life? Why do you actually like doing what you're doing? And from that, 
we actually um, caught up, or we actually discovered this fantastic guy called Fred. And Fred loves our business as much as we do. And why? Because we shut the duck up and we uncovered his values and we found out that his values aligned with our values and our values aligned with his values. So this guy, I'm really crazy about, okay? I've just discovered him. He is pretty special. This is Peter Platzer. He's the CEO of a satellite tech company in the States. Now this guy, I mean, he's loopy. He is right out there, okay? And I'll tell you why. It is harder to get into his company than it is to get into Harvard. When people apply to his company, you have a 1% chance of getting in. In Harvard, you, Harvard, you have a 5.53% chance. And you know what it is? Do you know what he absolutely is passionate about and thinks is the number one ingredient to his business success? Values. That's what he recruits on. And how he does it is very interesting. He has a 200 questionnaire that all um, applicants fill out. And all it's about is your personality, your value system, why you love your job, what you think you're good at. And since he's done that, he has increased um, job satisfaction to 90%. And he's, recruit, um, he's decreased turnover to zero. Now, this is the crazy part. He has now implemented a no firing policy. No firing. You cannot get fired. You can leave, but you cannot get fired. And that's because he absolutely believes that if you hire in values, you will always hire the right person. All right, lastly, three. Build a community. Um, build a community. So you've got the right people in your business. You understand who you are and you're communicating to people who you are. So then now it's time to build that community. So people have something that means something more than just a job. So you're very fortunate tonight because the person I'm just about to speak about is actually here. Wayne, Wayne, excellent stand up. Wave your gorgeous face, big hand, do it. Thank you. This is Wayne. <laughs> Thanks Wayne. Um, Wayne is co-founder and owner of a cleaning company that we work with. And his cleaning company, and, and the owners are very passionate, and, and Mikhail is very passionate about uh, being environmentally conscious. And everything they do is about sustaining the environment. So yes, of course, they've got environmentally friendly products, but because they wanted to link their team and their business into their community and build something, what they've done is they've made a promise. And that promise is every time they get a new client, whether it's an office or it's a home, they donate um, some of their time to cleaning up a local park, so the person's local area, a local park, a local playground, um, a local creek. And for some of us here, that would totally suck. Like, Imagine if your boss was like, yay, on Saturday we're going to be spending two hours cleaning up this local park. Some of us would love it, but some people aren't. And the great thing is they've built a community on their value systems. And their employees love it and embrace it because it's part of their DNA. All of his staff believe in what he believes. They're not just cleaners. They believe in the environment and they feel like they're doing something about it. So how do we do this? If, if you're not a cleaning company, you don't want to, you know, like go and pick up litter from the, from the park. Every business has their own people, their own personalities. Your job, and it is your job as the business owner, the business leader, as the business manager, is to uncover what your team need and what's important to them. And then when you do that, build a community around what they want. So lastly, to sum up, if you want to have a thriving, happy, productive, and dare I say, wealthy culture, you need to do three things. Firstly, you need to know who you are, face the truth, face the reality of what you are right now. Not in 10 years' time and, and you know, you're going to be a multimillionaire and you have 20 offices. Right now, face that reality. Number two, um, which I really wish I could remember. 
<laughs> no, I do remember. Stand by you. I'm just kidding. Um, stand by your values. So know who you are, know what you stand for, and make sure that the people in your business know exactly what you stand for. So that vision statement that I'm sure that you created with an external facilitator over a two-day workshop, freaking rip it up. Because it does, I bet you it doesn't mean anything. I bet you if I said, what's your values? You wouldn't know what they are. And it's always about the business owner's values. So take the time to invest in what's important to you and then recruit, hire, and you will find the right people that suit your business. Three, build a community. In my business, I certainly don't want people leaving. If people leave my business, I actually see it as a personal failure because I'm thinking, I haven't listened. Have they... The, do they feel safe in communicating to me that they're not happy? Um, and if, if I find out like they're leaving and I had no idea, it's because they don't trust me enough to have a discussion about it. So those things, so those three, th those three things will help you build a fantastic community and a fantastic culture. And let me tell you, not only as a business owner will you feel fulfilled and that your employees fulfilled, all your competitors will want to know your secret.